Hello everyone, Gilly here. In this video, uh, this episode of Trying New Tech, I'm gonna try out the SAFE framework. Um, SAFE is a framework I've never tried before. Uh, it's an F-sharp framework, and my F-sharp is a little bit rusty, so I might be struggling through this a little bit, but uh, it should be a lot of fun. Um, basically, SAFE is Saturn, which is a back-end technology, um, server-side technology, um, Azure, which would be the cloud hosting platform. I'm not gonna actually use Azure for this. I'm just gonna do everything locally. Fable, which is a transpiler from F Sharp to JavaScript. And Elmish, which is a framework in F Sharp for doing Elm-like development in F Sharp. So the app that I wanna to build today is a pool or billiards tracking app. And it's gonna be kind of dead simple, the back end portion of it, the Saturn portion of it's going to be kind of thin. I'm going to do most of it on the front end. Um, so to start out, I've already gone and installed all of the dependencies and I did bootstrap a new project, um, but I'm going to do a totally new one in this folder right here. So let me just open up my shell and it says to do .NET new safe. And I must say getting all the dependencies in order was really easy. Um, these instructions were pretty clear in my opinion. Um, so then I should do a .NET tool restore to get uh, my versions of Packet and Fake. Um, Packet is a package manager, F Sharp specific. Fake is an F Sharp build tool. So .NET fake build target run is what we're gonna do to actually run this project. One thing I wanted to note is that currently in SpaceMax, um, it's not working with F Sharp. It wouldn't install the package. So I'm going to be doing everything without formatting or editor tools. Um, not the best, but it should be okay. So this is running right now. I guess while it's running, I'll just show you around what it generated. It generated all of these files, um, some JavaScript package files some Visual Studio Solution files or README, just tons of different things. Um, source has client, server, and shared. And shared shows one of the kind of interesting things. Um, they actually put some validation logic here. And this validation logic is the same code across the back end and the front end. So that's something that you hear in JavaScript a lot. You hear people saying, it's nice to use Node because you can have JavaScript in the front end, JavaScript in the back end. Well, this framework enables you to do the same thing. So if I go to the port that the application opens up, it looks like it hasn't finished compiling yet. Um, but once it does, it should be pretty fast. At least when I was toying with it, it was pretty fast. Um, so it's still going. But uh, it's going to give me a little to-do app that it's built out. So it already comes with an application example. Um, and we're going to build our app off of that. So whenever this is done, Okay, compiled successfully, refresh it. And we have pool tracker. Um, that's cool. It built, it uh, picked up my directory name and named it after that. So already starting off well. Um, I'm just gonna close this terminal for now. And then, I don't know. Uh, I don't really care about all these to do's and whatnot, but I'm gonna do this piece by piece. So starting in the client index.fs, we also have an index.html, which I assume just has, yeah, the Elmish app gets injected into this div. I don't know a lot about all this, but we'll figure it out. So the first thing I want to do for this application is I kind of want these inputs, but this should be for inputting players' names. So input, um, we actually have this input field on our model. Um, if you're not familiar, with Elm or Elmish or one of those, the usual pattern you use is you have a model which represents the state of your front end application, your UI, and then you have a way to update your model. So given a message in your system, how does it affect your model? And then you have a view. So given a model, how do I render that model? And how does that model um, send messages back to the update function? So that's the idea here. Um, so in our view, what I want to do is I want to take our input field. That just says what needs to be done right now. I want to move it to the top. 
So field is grouped. So there's a group here between these guys. So what I want to do is I just want to take this whole grouping, move it to the top for now. And then instead of what needs to be done, I want to call this player one. And then I'm just going to add another field for player two. And this is pretty rad. If you look at this, it's automatically reloading, which is pretty awesome. And I assume for the most part, the stuff inside of here is going to be responsive. Um, one of the things I do want eventually is to be able to use this on a phone so you can kind of quickly click around and track your games, um, your billiard games. But yeah, so I don't need this button here, but I want to keep it around just to have an example of what a button even looks like. I mean, I'm sure there's somewhere online I can find all this. Um, but anyways, so instead of set input, really these are going to be player one and player two's names. So instead of input, I'm going to have player one name, which is going to be a string. Player two name, which is going to be a string. Um, something's going to break with this for sure. So I'm going to bring up my shell again. Um, it looks like app.fs. Wow. Multiple places. Um, 26 is whining because we didn't assign this model. So player one, this is our um, initialization. So where do we initialize the state? Okay. Um, and that worked just fine. And things are seeming to work. So wonderful. Uh, so I want to get rid of input. I don't care about input anymore. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of it and see what F sharp tells me see what .NET tells me is the problem. Um, so 73 is where we're first told there's a problem. Or I guess 67 is where we're first told there's a problem. Um, this is tying the input to a particular model. So I want to tie this to player two name, and I want to tie this to player one name. OK, 41 is complaining now because I have an add to do set input. I have these messages that I don't really want anymore. Um, so let's see, model with input equals, okay. So I'm gonna get rid of set input. I'm not actually gonna get rid of it. I'm going to convert it over. I'm gonna convert it over to set player one name and set player two name. Now I could do this a little bit differently. Actually, you know what, I will. Type one or two. This is very silly, but it'll work just fine for our purposes. One or two, so this will discriminate uh, between our players. So set player name is going to be of one or two string. So instead of set input, we're going to have set player name. And if we have set player name of one, we're going to want to take our old model and say player one name equals the value. If we have two, we're going to want to set player two name. OK. And so far, I just want to say I'm absolutely loving this development cycle. The errors are great. Um, I'm finding it very easily to navigate around. I've generated a lot of errors at this point, but that's OK. Um, so 81 is the next thing to deal with. So this should say set player name. And this should be two. This should be one. And then what else are we complaining about? 81 is complaining. Oh, huh. I wouldn't expect 81 to still be complaining. Set player name. Did I do the wrong thing here? No, that's right. Oh, 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 oh. Right, in F sharp, um, it's not like Haskell. The constructor is something that takes a tuple. So we've got to give this a tuple. That's right. Classic ML style thing. OK. Uh, so 47. I don't have input. Um, that's fine. I actually just want to get rid of add to do and added to do. I don't need those. Okay, uh, so now we have line 40. 
Expects the arguments to be tupled. Okay, yep, that's the same thing I was mentioning. There we go. Uh, line 30, input doesn't exist, so that's fine. We can just delete input. I want to get rid of input. Okay, uh, compiled successfully. So there we go. It's still working just fine. Um, I should be able to set my inputs. So I can say like uh, Jim Joe. Okay, no errors generated anywhere that I'm aware of. That's cool. Um, initially, this does a get to do's command. So it's going to send a command back to the API to actually retrieve any to do's that have been saved off. I don't want to do any commands to start. I just want to start this thing fresh. Um, so I'm going to say command dot none. Okay, and that's nice. I wonder if I can, let's see, where is this init use? Is there a way I can even simplify that? No, that's okay. Um, cool, so I don't care about get to do's either, or got to do's rather, so I'm just gonna remove that. And there we go, we already have a way to set a player, so that's cool. Um, how are their values coming back here? I'm not retrieving anything. Okay, I refreshed it and they went away. So that's cool. Um, wonderful. So to make this work, there are a couple of things that I need. Um, what I kind of want to do is I kind of want to track all of the balls that are on the table. I want to track whose turn it is. Um, so let's, let's start with turns. Turns are easy. So... Uh, player, or I'll just say turn actually, turn, and this is going to be one or two. Um, so now it should complain because that's not set in a couple of places. So turn equals one. We'll start out with player one, their turn being first. Um, one or two is not defined, and F sharp I got to put this above. Okay, so cool. Um, it would be nice to somehow highlight whose turn it is um, currently. So to highlight it, I'm not actually going to highlight. I'm just going to put some text. Um, it's not the nicest, but it should work. So text. We can do a string like this. We can do a list item. Um, let's just say something like... Below this box, let's add, ooh, this box is the container, hmm, but we have this div, is where, this is where the grouping happens, okay, so we have some content here, so I'm just going to do something silly like string current turn, let's see how that works. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay, so current turn is no one, but I can actually format this to choose um, the correct name. So what we can do is we can do something like ooh, uh, match uh, model dot turn with, and I guess I could backpipe it. I'm sure folks don't really like backpiping very much. Um, one would be model dot. Oh, and really, <laughs> uh, this isn't just a backpipe. We've got to plus it like this. So backpipe wouldn't actually work there. Uh, module dot player one name. Two module dot player two name. Let's see what it thinks of that. It doesn't like that at all. None of the types React Element Unit support the operator plus. Okay, well the problem here is pretty straightforward. I just need some parens around this. Okay, uh, 84. Hmm, interesting. Match model turn with one does this, two does this. Interesting. Um, I'm not actually sure what I did wrong at this point. Um, 
String current. Let's see. Somewhere it thinks I have unit. 84. One maps to this, two maps to that. Maybe this is a formatting thing. Some subtle thing. Type unit does not match type string. Hmm. Oh, module. <laughs> Some muscle memory coming into play there. That took a little longer than I would have liked. So current turn is player one. So I'll just say Gilly. Jack. Okay. That's kind of nice. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to render a couple of things. I want to render all of the balls that are currently on the pool table. I actually want to bring up Wikipedia because I have a bad memory and it's a little late. So billiard table. Uh, this is like all possible billiard tables. I just want like pool. Pool billiard. I bet this brings up the same thing. Oh, okay, nice. Um, so we have 1 through 13. No, 15. 1 through 15. Okay. So what I want to do actually is I want to make a set of balls that are still available. These are the balls that are still on the table. And normally I would do set of list. And I might do something like 1 to 15. I think that would work. Um, field to compile. Type model does not define the field constructor. Player 2 name. Player 1 name. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oops. This is very silly. Uh, set of int is what I want. This is the type, of course. Not the initialization. I was getting those a little confused. Um, so balls on table is going to be set. Here we go. Of list from one to one to fifteen. Okay, uh, eighty six is now wrong. Um, huh? Why? Oh, it's an indentation problem. Um, compiled with warnings. Okay, okay, okay. So we have a weird indentation thing here. Um, to resolve this, I usually like to. Uh, just make a helper function. Um, sometimes F Sharp is a little picky on the formatting, and it should be because it's a white space sensitive language. So if you get something wrong, it can be difficult for it to diagnose. So it wants you to be specific. So player name. So given a model and given the actual selector, one or two. Let's just write a function which will get this back. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it have been funny if I uh, made the same issue there? That would have been hilarious. Um, player name. So I should just be able to now say. Oh, and actually, I overcomplicated that a little bit. Um, player name should actually just do match model dot turn with this. Okay, there we go, wonderful. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add all of the available balls. Um, so this is gonna be kind of interesting. Um, so let's see what we got here. Jack, looking good so far. So let's just add a button for each ball. It's a little weird, but what I'm thinking is something like, you'll click the button, you'll click the ball, which will highlight it, and then you'll click a pocket to indicate I hit the ball into this pocket. And then, um, yeah. Oh, you know what too? Ooh, something tricky about this. Um, there's a cue ball, which you can hit into other pockets. So the cue ball, the cue ball is special though, because the cue ball is always a ball on the table. 
So we're going to kind of just treat it specially. It's always something on the table. Um, okay. Sorry, long-winded, but hopefully you get the point. Um, so what I want to do then is I want to open up another group. Because these groups seem to be particularly useful. So one of these divs with a grouping in it. And I'm going to open this up below the turn. And I'm going to kill the content inside of here. And here's that useful button that I wanted to be around. Um, so let's see what it looks like so far. Everything should still be working. Let's make sure it compiles. Okay, it compiles. So these buttons are going to be for each available ball. Um, so yeah, let me just go ahead and see what this ends up looking like. Failed to compile because this stuff doesn't all exist. Um, formatting is getting a little bit weird, but that's okay. So for ball in, uh, I want to say for ball in model dot balls on table do, and this model I'm going to say seek dot to list. I think something like that will work. Um, constructor add to do is not defined. Okay, that's fine. Um, this doesn't work yet. That's good. Um, I don't really care about this to do is valid thing. Um, I do want the button to be the name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to backpipe. Oh, I don't even have to. Well, maybe I should. String ball. Hey, look at that. All right, that <laughs> that does not look pretty. And ideally, I would format these to actually look more like the actual cue balls themselves. But for now, this will do just fine. Um, so what I want to do is I want to add another ball for the cue ball. So this one is not going to be a four, part of a for loop. Um, I wonder if this will even just work like that. I might have to do something where I do like uh, cons onto this. Like that, where I say control.p. You know, I take this thing right here and I dump it right here. It's probably going to error because ball isn't defined. I'll say q. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Wow. That was pretty simple. Uh, it looks pretty bad, but that's okay. Um, I mean, one thing I could do is I could just do a little wrapping. Um, but for now, I'm not going to worry about it. So next, I want the pockets. Uh, this is going to be a little trickier. I, I don't I don't know a great way to organize this. Um, are there standards for this? Standard names for the pockets? Pool diagram. Hmm. I don't know, but for now I'm just going to say um, I'm going to do something terrible and just put like a conventional thing where there's like numbers one through six to mean each pocket. Um, later maybe I'll format it to look like a pool table, but for now that'll probably suffice. Um, so. What I want to do is I want to um, oh. okay, yes, I want a button for each pocket. So that looks a lot like what I just did. And really what I want is I want a way to more easily say these are the balls. So I'm just going to throw a string label in there because I don't know any better. And then after this, I'm just going to throw pockets. Or you know what, maybe I'll do um, just a little coding system. This isn't great, 
but I'll do something like um, type pocket equals upper left upper right center and this will just all be relative to whatever the players decide upper and lower mean center left um, center right and then lower versions of these guys okay so that's what a pocket will look like so I just want to say you know pockets and this pockets is just going to be a list of all of the possible values here Morning and correct incantation. So I can probably do something like this to fix that. Oh, there's another one, 105. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to worry about that right now. I'm just going to skip over that. So those are all of the pockets. Um, I might, ooh, do I want to format these? I could probably just show them as is. So I can probably do something like really what I'm doing with this loop right here will do just fine. Um, so let me just take that. So t -t 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 -t. control dot P, I'll just take this whole thing. <clears throat> and let me undo some of the nastiness I ended up doing with that other ball. So me undo this stuff like this fail to compile it's okay um, control P I probably need to delete that fail to compile um, delete that compiled with warnings okay so for pocket in pockets Um, ball isn't there, so can I just string pocket? I think I can. Compiled with warnings, okay. Uh, and that does not look great because those are not grouped. Let me throw those into a group. I think the groups are pretty nice. So field is grouped. Oh, the grouping didn't work in that case. I wonder, wonder what I did differently. Let me, let me see if I can figure that out. So up here I have field is grouped, and then I immediately have a control per ball. Ah, that's probably the difference. Okay, let's try that again. So I have, maybe I can replace this with the group. And maybe that'll do it. Yeah, that's better. Still not great, um, but it'll do. So what I want to do is I want to have a current turn. And that current turn is going to be a grouping of balls and pockets. And just to simplify things, I'm going to have it so that highlighted ball is just one thing at a time. And I'm going to have it so highlighted pocket. I'm not even going to have a highlighted pocket. I'm going to just simplify the design. You click a ball, you click a pocket. Just to keep it simple for now. Um, and that's not really simple from a UX perspective necessarily. That's more simple from a I'm lazy right now perspective. And I just want to write the basics before I do much more. So current turn. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Current turn is going to be a list of tuples. And those tuples are going to be a pair of a ball mixed with a pocket. So this is saying, what did I do this turn? Um, so a ball is going to be either a cue ball or it's gonna be a number of 
um, int. So it failed to compile because I haven't initialized current turn. So what is current turn? It's an empty list. Okay, and also the other thing I need, I just wanna say this is flowing wonderfully. Like having done a little bit of Elm before and some F sharp also, uh, this, this framework feels really natural so far, at least the Elmish part of it. Um, so highlighted, I'm gonna call it selected ball. And this is going to be a ball option. And that's of course errant because um, I need to start with something here. Selected ball is gonna be none to start. You haven't selected anything to start. Um, cool, okay. So what I want to do now is I want to have a function um, select ball. So to do that, not a function, a, a message. So select ball of um, a ball. So it compiled, that's good. Uh, if you click a ball, it should send the select ball message. So let's see. I guess if it were an event, you'd say ball selected. Um, I don't know if I care about this disabled concept, so I'm just gonna remove it for now. So for pocket and pockets, we want to dispatch select ball. And the ball is going to be different depending on what we're, oh, oops, this is the pocket. Um, so QL first we'll do. I'm just gonna get rid of disabled, but I don't think I care about disabled right now. Um, select ball, so. If you select the cue ball, this is going to want to do select ball Q. Okay, we feel to compile. Uh, this is expected to have type ball. One seven select ball. Hmm. Select ball. I thought Q. It's right there. Hmm. This expression is expected to have type ball, but has select ball to CSS prop. Let me look at what the other dispatches here look like. Set player name x dispatch. Oh, that's the value of. Oh, interesting. Um. Hmm. I don't actually know what's happening here. So button on clicked, on click, select ball. Expect to have type ball, but here has object to CSS prop. Select ball. That's really weird. Select ball. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Well, I guess that's just a warning here. That's a nice warning telling me I missed a case. But this has me a little stumped if I'm being honest. Um, expected to have type ball but has something that takes in an object and returns back a CSS prop. That doesn't make any sense to me. Try something silly. Oh. That's weird. Q, if you click it, you get this. Incomplete patterns match, error, huh. Is there something here that's unexpected? Like am I, oh, am I shadowing a name or something interesting like that? I'm gonna try to rename this cue ball. Oh, interesting. Q. Q must have been a reserved name somehow. So I'm actually going to name this numbered ball. Just to be really kind of crazy. 
Um, anyway, so now when you select a ball, it should work. I'm gonna get, I should get a runtime error if I try to select a cue ball. Um, interesting, I didn't, but that should have really not compiled. So what happens if I have 12 of this and try it? Nothing, okay. Interesting, so I wonder if there's just something. Hmm, but anyways, I should be able to go to 63 message here I should be able to say something like select ball ball we'll take our old model and what we'll do is we'll say highlighted ball or sorry not highlighted that was what I wanted to call it first selected ball equals sum ball okay so that's how you select a ball and then um, I kind of want to somehow highlight this thing. So maybe what I'll do is I will not set it to be a primary if it's selected. That's a little weird. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the best I know how to do at the moment. Um, but what I need to do first is I need to select the other kinds of balls too or make them selectable. So if you select the cue ball, this happens. If you select another ball, you get a numbered ball of ball. Okay, and the color, hmm, I wonder where that comes from. So this is where I'm starting to get into a point where I can't really do, well, I'm really just, I mean, this is a weird point where I'm trying to go as far as I can without looking up any of the uh, APIs here. Um, so there's a question of like, how far do I go? I'll just keep going. I'll see how far I can go without looking up any docs. Um, not that the docs are bad. Their docs are really good from what I've seen so far. Um, but I'm just going to be a little, a little whiny. Or no, you know what? I should, I should look up. I should look up the docs. All right. So what am I even looking at here? I'm looking at a bunch of controls and components. Um, they open these intentionally right above the view. So I'm going to assume it's not coming from something up here, although it could be coming from this Elmish thing, but I don't bet Elmish is the overall framework. I bet it's this Fulma thing is what I'm looking at right here. Yeah. So this is like a very specific uh, CSS framework. I bet, I bet this is the kind of thing that I should be looking at. So let me look at it and... Yeah, okay, we have elements, we have buttons. This seems like what I'm doing. Um, we have colors, look at that. So we have primary, we have link, we have success. I'll just say success, it's silly, um, but we'll roll with it. So button color is light, is dark, is black, is success. Okay, so if we have Q selected, if, uh, Ooh, what do I want to say? If model dot selected ball is some Q ball, then is success. Else is primary. So let's just test this little piece. Oh, failed to compile. Um, doesn't have select ball. Okay, well, of course it's selected ball. Compile with warnings. So if I go back to my code, okay, so that looks like a nice highlight. That's good enough for me. If I select something else, it doesn't get highlighted because I haven't written that code yet, but Q gets unhighlighted, so that's a good sign. Um, so let's do the same thing for the other balls. So we're just going to say if selected ball equals sum of ball here. Oops, that fails to compile this expression. Expect the other type ball sum of numbered ball. Yep, that's good. Q, select it. Three, four, five, six. All right, rocking. Um, so what's gonna happen now, and I really should build in kind of an undo to all of this, because this is not gonna be pretty from a design perspective. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it so when you select a ball, you go and you select a pocket, and then it removes the ball from the balls on the table, and it stores the fact that this current turn, um, that's what happened. Um, 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, add a new uh, message. This message is going to be like select pocket of pocket. Okay, compiled with warnings because we're missing cases. Wonderful. That's great. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so when you click a pocket, we're going to dispatch select pocket pocket. So select pocket pocket. Okay. Um, now when we select ball, we can do something else near selecting ball, selecting the pocket. So this matches on the message, but I want to add a match that also does the model because we're going to consider the model here. So what I want to do is something like this just to make it so everything still works hopefully. Okay, very good. So to select a pocket, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, if we get a pocket, um, some pocket. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look and say, does the model have a selected ball? And we can do that just by this, just by destructuring it like that. Um, and we're also going to add an explicit case for none as well to make sure everything still works. And basically this is going to just return back model. And that should be exhaustive now because we've wildcarded all of the other cases and we've explicitly spelled out the two things that differ on this new case. Um, and basically what this is gonna do is this is going to reset selected ball to none. Oh, one thing to spell out really quickly, um, this will um, not do anything. So if you just select a pocket without selecting a ball first, it's gonna do nothing. Again, not the greatest UX, but I'm really looking to just kinda write something here and not necessarily think too much about all of that yet. Um, so selected ball is that. I have to do a set remove. I forget how to do that. Um, that's okay. So selected ball is nothing. Current turn is going to be model dot current turn. And this is not great to do, um, but these lists are going to remain relatively short. So I'm actually going to um, add on to the end of the list. Not great to do, um, but it's okay. It's not great because it's not particularly efficient. Um, these lists are linked lists from the head, so this is not the best thing to do. But anyways, the current turn is going to have added to it the value um, of the ball and uh, pocket. So current turn, I'm just trying to remember what that was. It was ball pocket pairs, okay. Which makes sense. That's kind of the order I've been talking about things. Ball, then the pocket. So ball, pocket. Okay, and that seemed to work. So now I should be able to do this, and then do this, do this, and then do this. Things are flowing decently well. Um, I also have to remove it from the balls on the table. So balls on table equals set dot remove and I'll just try something and see if it works or not. Um, remove ball from model dot balls on table. Uh, fail to compile. Expected to have type int, but here has type ball. Ah, okay. Um, interesting. So this is kind of curious because it forces me to think about the cue ball case. Um, the cue ball case is an end of something. It could be an end of the turn, it could be an end of the game, so it could be an end of both. Um, the cue ball case is interesting, but here this ball is either a numbered ball or a cue ball. Um, so what we're going to do... Hmm... <laughs> um, we are going to actually do something interesting here. Um, I'm going to do something, I don't know how I feel about this. 
Um, but we're gonna say type event. Event is a terrible name to use because it kind of clashes with, clashes with message. Um, um, we'll say we'll say game event just to kind of differentiate it from like a infrastructure thing in Elmish. Um, but basically, we're going to have sunk ball. So if you sunk a ball, that's going to have a ball pocket combo, or you can scratch. Um, ball sunk scratch. Those are kind of the past tense, I guess. Ball sank sounds really weird. Um, but anyways, uh, a current turn is going to be a game event list, actually, then. And that should make our compilation fail. Um, 76. The line is 76. That is this line, which is kind of what we'd expect. So if you have a numbered ball, of some ball number. That's gonna say uh, ball sunk. Uh, Failed to compile, this expression is expected to have type ball, but here has type int. Okay, so this is weird because it's actually kind of wrapping back so I'm actually going to call this numbered. Um, and this is actually just going to be an int in a pocket. Everything else is a scratch, which I think makes sense. So ball sunk, ball sunk, now because numbered. And it's getting a little, uh, a little verbose, but that's OK. We're OK with that. Um, so now if I do something like this, ah, oh, look at that. So this is my turn. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. Eventually I scratched, and scratching is not working yet, which we kind of expect. Um, so what we're gonna do is if you select a pocket and the ball that you selected was the cue ball, then uh, same things kind of happen here. Um, model current turn. Oh, that's a little confusing, huh? Calling it current turn. It's more like turn events or something like that. Let's let's rename that. I know I'm hopping around a lot, but I think it's probably good to think about these things. So turn events. We'll call it current. Mm, I don't want to get too much too much into the weeds here. The turn events is fine. Um, so in this one, we don't do this. We scratch and that failed to compile um, I guess it's scratched isn't it scratched value constructor ball okay so we don't remove this ball per se um, should I make it flip to the end of the turn um I don't think so. I don't think I want, I could make this automatically switch the current turn to be the other turn, um, but I don't really want to do that because if I do that, you might want to enter things out of order. Like maybe you hit the cue ball in and after the cue ball went in, another ball went in, um, which you might want to track in that order. Um, so I'm actually going to make it so the turn change is explicit. Um, so to do that, I'm going to actually add a button, which is explicitly end turn. But let's make sure really quick this kind of behaves. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I broke something, huh? So how do I know? How do I know what I broke here? That's a. This is a. This is a good question for the framework. How do I know what I broke? Maybe. Maybe it's just because I don't have the latest and greatest. Let's try this. Let's go to console. Ooh, I don't know what all this means. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. So if I do this, I scratch. Oh, error connecting. Interesting. OK, well, that's working, but it's erroring every single time. Hmm. I'm going to pretend like I don't see that. Um, but 
What I will say is if you did scratch in the current turn, I don't think I want the cue ball to appear. That's a little bit of weird logic, but basically I just want to um, check that. I want to check that and make sure make sure it's it's happening right. So, hmm. Oh man, this is interesting. I guess it doesn't matter. I can leave the cue ball out there. It's a little inconsistent with the other ones, um, but that's okay. It's it's fine. Um, all right, so I really what I want then is end turn. Um, yeah, so message end turn. So I'm going to add a new button. Let's see, we got balls, we got pockets. I'll add a new grouping, so I might want another button here at some point, who knows. Control P, button, primary button, dispatch, and turn. Okay, and basically this is just going to say end turn. Okay, good. So, current turn. Um, Jack. So I go, I hit one in, I hit 10 in. I end my turn, it switches over to Jack. Okay, really good, here we go. We have a case missed, a case that I missed. That's good, uh, we'll refresh this. So I need to handle end turn in my update. So ending a turn. looks like toggling the current turn, which I just called turn, I believe. So turn equals one. So this is gonna be model with turn equals two. And I'm really just writing a toggle here. Um, this may have been easier to do with a Boolean flag, but the Boolean flag has some interesting things where you have to uh, kind of decide on something a little bit arbitrary, like um, what do I say? Like, is player one's turn is the Boolean flag, or is player two turns is player two's turn? Um, but anyways, so something's wrong. Model with turn equals two. Model with turn equals one. Hmm. Ooh, that's really interesting. This should have been. Should have been fine, I thought. 132, bad indentation. Oh, it's something here, okay. Um, well, that's odd. Oh, that's just a warning, compiled with warnings. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. So, you have a new game that starts up. You say Gilly is playing against Jack. I don't like that this errors every time, but I don't really know what that's all about. Um, so maybe I go and I hit the one ball in. And that's the end of my turn right there. Uh, I missed an end of my turn. Flips over to Jack. Wonderful, okay. So ending the turn then should do something else. Um, I want this, the, the primary purpose of this application is to track the entire game. So what that's going to do is that's going to, um, that's going to, I mean, basically this is what I want to do. I want to say game, maybe I'll say history. Nah, I'll just say game. Game is going to be a list of game events list. So this is a little bit of a weird way to track it. Um, but basically it's going to be lists of lists where the inner lists represent a turn. So maybe maybe we'll make this a little more explicit. So type turn equals game event list. So a game is really just a list of turns. Um, 
And one thing we should track as we're going is we should track, well, player one is the first player, so we should be able to correspond each turn alternating with each player. Um, yeah, so 62 is complaining because, because, oh, because game is empty. So game starts out as an empty list. We haven't played any game yet. Um, oh, I should also get rid of this to-dos thing. So to-dos can go away. That's just an, a remnant of what was here. Compiled with warnings. Okay. So, um, who? one thing that's interesting is on the eight ball, you kind of have a weird case with the eight ball. Um, once the eight ball goes in, the game is over. Um, so maybe I should code a special case in for the eight ball, where once the eight ball goes in, um, you can say what pocket was called. And that additional information should be enough to kind of piece together what happened in the end. If you say a pocket was called and they say the eight ball went into that pocket, um, that means they won. Um, if it went into a different pocket, they lost. If they scratched, they lost. So we can kind of discreetly determine what that actually means. And I just want to mention real quick, I kind of like these, uh, these backgrounds. They're, they're pretty. Um, I don't know where they're coming from, but they're pretty. So what do I want to do then? That's a long, long winded way to say, um, if the eight ball goes in, I want to be able to say, was it called yes or no? I guess I could have, I mean, really I could write a lot of logic in to be able to detect if it's an opportune time to call the eight ball. But I'm really just going to keep this dumb for now. Um, it's pretty easy to up the level of all that stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to add a new toggle. Mm. No. I'm going to add a new button by end turn. Oh, really? Okay, wait. This should um, accumulate the games. So game is going to be model.game with on the end. Again, this isn't a great thing to do. Um, and what did I call this? I called this the current turn. The turn events. Is that right? Sorry, a little tired here. Um, okay, yeah. So this is going to be the old game with the model.turn events. And the thing to note here is that we should also reset the turn events. So turn events is a new empty list. OK, um, and this is getting a little bit, I don't know, a little wordy. So I'm just going to say um, let switch turn equal function one goes to two, two goes to one. So that allows me to do this switch turn from the current turn. Great. Okay, um, so there's end turn. So I'm gonna say, hmm, I'm gonna add a new button called call eight ball. Hmm, do I wanna do that? No, I'm gonna add a button to say end game. And again, the UX on this is terrible. I'm just going to put the end game button right next to the end turn button. That's not a great thing to do. 
maybe I'll make it a different color just for fun, um, is warning. That sounds good. <laughs> I mean, really, you'd probably do something else. Yeah, that's good, though. End game. And that's going to send an end game. End game command. So end turn, we have a new one, end game. So ending the game um, should kind of do the same thing as end turn in a way. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to keep it simple and we're gonna say the model doesn't matter. Um, the turn doesn't matter at this point because we're over. We're done tracking that state. Um, model with game equals model dot game with the turn events, and we could reset the turn events. But we're not resetting anything, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, but one thing we are going to do is we're going to ask whether or not the correct eight ball pocket was called. Um, so to do that, we're actually gonna do something really silly. Um, we're just going to say model can have a new flag. This is gonna be the, the silliest way to do this as possible. Um, we're gonna add a new flag prompt or end game in end game. That's not great. I don't remember if you say boolean or bool. Okay, it looks like you say boolean. Um, game equals in end game equals false. We're never in the end game to start. Uh, fail to compile. Boolean is not defined, so it is bool. That's good. It's easier to type bool. Compile with warnings. Okay. Um, and if we're in the end game, we just really want to know um, was the correct pocket called for the eight ball. So this is really, really dumb. This is a poor state machine. Um, really, we should check. You know, I, I can check if the eight ball was hit in hit in, in the last turn. Um, but for now, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to blindly always prompt was the eight ball um, actually sent in basically um this isn't great this is pretty sloppy but it'll be okay we'll get over with it we'll, we'll get it over with um oh look at this can i say this 12 and get this to be wide enough oh i can it doesn't look great um because the centering is a little bit off column offset oh i see okay so maybe i can say like let's see six and three so that's weird that doesn't seem to make sense. If the width is six here and the offset's three, why does this look equal? Do I just have some weird zooming thing going on? I don't know. Let me try to like do something like this. I'll take that down by one, take that up by two, and see what that looks like. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. One, ten. Hey, look at that. That was easy. I'm happy I uh, ran across that. So container box, model dispatch. So I think I'm gonna do something like, oh, end game should say, okay. Yeah, okay, so if I get an end game command or an end game message, I wanna say in end game equals true to indicate, yes, I'm in end game. If model dot in end game I want to do something different than before end game model dispatch end game box container box so this is kind of nice I'm going to switch out my entire view and use a different function um, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing for now which is really silly but it's okay 
end game box. And basically what I want here is I want just a couple of buttons. Um, are these buttons? Those are inputs. Inputs, fields with a grouper. That's good, but the other one was simpler for the pockets. So I'm going to use the pockets. Um, and I'm also going to add, oh, you know what? I actually want that pocket text back. And turn string pockets, pockets. That's good. So basically what I want to do is I want to kill this, kill this, and I want to just say was correct eight ball called. This is really, really sloppy, um, but you get the idea. Uh, was the correct eight ball called? And I want two questions. Um, is danger? Hmm. I'll just say yes and no. Um, correct eight dispatch correct eight um, yes and then we'll do I don't want to do for each pocket here I just want to do this and then I want to do this for no and I'll just say is danger and I'll actually say dispatch correct eight true correct eight dispatch false true um, correct eight isn't a thing so so what we're gonna do then is we're just going to say um, Uh, the model should just say um, correct eight or wait um, was correct eight called pool this is a pretty weak version um, then we have correct eight is a message of bool failed to compile 72 was correct eight called uh, false, we don't know yet really. It's really unknown. So that's a little bit of a weird bit of state. Um, but then we have another message we have to handle. So near end game, we can say correct eight. Um, true or false was correct, we'll say. Eight model with correct a, what did I say, was correct a called. Was correct a called, was correct eight. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So now if I go into end game, it should work. So let's just sort out a really quick little game. Um, I hit the cue ball in the upper left or the one in the upper left, I hit the cue ball in the upper left, and that ends my turn. Moves over to Jack's turn. Jack hits the seven in the center left, and then Jack hits the eight in the center right, and then that ends Jack's turn, because Jack did not mean to do that. And that also ends the game. Oh, that didn't work. Um, end game must be sending an end turn end turn command I would imagine so end turn end game look at how easy that was to debug and I'm not very smart I don't think it's because I'm smart that I got that um, it's just the framework makes it pretty easy it behaved like I ended the turn when I hit end game so let's try this again um, the framework's very helpful here so I won in the upper left I hit the cue ball in the center left end of my turn this is one of those things, this is a design nightmare. I can tell like I would do so many things wrong if I was actually using this, so I should sure this up later. Um, Jack hits seven here. Jack hits the eight in center left. Ends their turn, ends the game. 
Was the correct eight ball called? No. Okay. So that's good. It's not resetting anything. Um, that's good. That's very, very good. Um, because really what I want to do now is I want to send I want to send this message to the back end so it can be saved somewhere. So I want to save the entire history off. And then I want to reinitialize the game because when I, when I play pool, um, I tend to play multiple games back to back. If not in the same sit sitting, then over the course of you know a day or something. So this is pretty good so far. Um, I'm not sure if I should quit now. It's getting a little late. Well, it already was a little late. And I've been going for about an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to try to send the command, because I just think it would be very, very cool to see the command go over the wire. So we're going to do it. Um, so now I get into some of the more interesting plumbing things. Um, to do's API, routing create API, routing with route builder, route builder, routing proxy. Okay, so this is like some way to automatically proxy this. Um, I to do's API, I have no idea where that's coming from, if I'm being entirely honest with you. Um, so let's see, open Elmish, open shared. It's probably coming from shared. So there's shared code talking about the API between each, and that's okay. Uh, we can deal with that. So let's open up that shared code. So shared has all of this, it has route builder um, with type name, method name, um, type is to do's API, and here are the actual actions that we have here. So what we want is something like save game. So what this should do is this should take a game and it should return back an async unit. And now this is probably going to whine what is a game. And that's great if it's whining what is a game. Because we don't actually have something here that helps us. Um, this, this, this can't import the UI's code. The UI imports this. That would be cyclical. So basically what I want to do is I want the model of this thing. Um, I want to build out a model here. So my actual model, I'm going to replace this to do with my game. And basically the model that I want here is I want something that tells me was the correct eight ball called. And that's gonna be a Boolean. And then I want something that looks very similar to what I had over there. So player one, and there's gonna be a convention that's assumed here that's um, player one is the first player. Player two is the second player. Um, in the order they in the order they actually take their turns. Okay. Um, still failing to compile. That's good. Um, and then we really want to track the history of the game. Um, and the history of the game is really this game thing right here. So a turn list. Um, and we'll just we'll just duplicate some of these types for now. Because this should f end up fitting pretty well. Um, there might be something there might be something tricky here about serializing and deserializing these discriminated unions across the wire. Um, we'll see. So numbered ball sunk of int pocket. Uh, we don't know what a pocket is, so we'll bring in our pockets. And maybe maybe this is an indicator that these things should be in shared, actually. Um, can we we just open shared? So maybe you know what we maybe we can just bring this straight in from shared. So maybe I can say, there we go. And game event is this. And a turn is this, and game. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. 
ID is not defined on line 30 of shared. Well, that's good. Um, game. I don't care whether this is valid thing. Um, I care about this. Save history. Oh, interesting. I don't know exactly what's going on here. I need to think about this for a second. Um, ID equals GUID new game. Oh, okay. So this is just a constructor for making one of these games. Um, so to create it, we want P1 name, P2 name. Um, was correct. Eight, call, eight ball called. Seems a little verbose. Um, game turn list. And then this is just setting it inside of this record. Yeah, this feels a little terse. I don't know if I want to do this exactly. Um, I think it was doing that because of the GUID that it wanted. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually just going to get rid of this. I don't care. Um, and I also don't really care about this I to do's API. I care more about I game API. Really, it's a pool game, um, but that's okay. I to do's API. Let's see. This might be one of those things where I kind of get far and then I decide to quit because I uh, <laughs> messed something up. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's pretend like this is all good. And actually, I kind of miss what was here before, um, because that's where the actual commands are being used. This is going to require a command to send this over the wire. I'm just going to do this just because I'm kind of particular, annoyingly so, about these things. Pipe it in. Um, so we have this game API. So I just kind of want to see how this to do's API was used in the past. Um, basically, I need to send a command back to say, remember this game in history. And then the back end is going to just, for now I'm probably just gonna serialize it to a string and save it in a file. Um, that's not the greatest way to handle this, um, but that should be enough for now. So super long-winded and kind of filibustering if I'm being honest. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at the example that they give you. So. F sharp safe template. So let me just open up the template. And let me go to index.fs. Client index.fs. Default. Sure, default. Um, to do's API. So they have a message. Um, set input of this, add to do. So my message that's going to trigger this is going to be correct eight. So this is actually gonna be what triggers this message for me. Um, so where is to do API used? Well, it looks like, okay, so you say command of async perform and then you say get to do, so this is the actual action. I assume this is the input to the action, and this is the message to send back when you're done. Okay, so that's a long, a long-winded way to say what I want to do is I actually want to, from here, send back a command of async, and this is going to be games API. And instead of get to do's, this is going to be save game. And the input needs to be a game. So we need to actually build up a game here. And then I want to send a message saved game when this is done. So saved game, that's going to be a new message. And let's see what happens. I expect this um, thing to fail. Let's see, F sharp, yep. Okay, curlies are not valid by themselves. So what I need to do is I need to convert my state to a game. Um, so model to game. This 
this is gonna turn back a game. Let's see if that works. Failed to compile. Okay, so let's see now. Um, model to game. Model. Failed to compile. Games. API is not defined. Oh, games, plural. It's not plural, it's game API. Failed to compile. This question doesn't type unit to message, but here has type message. So that's in 90. One one two one one two. So that's the saved game thing. Interesting. So theirs is got to do's of type. Oh, okay. So that actually stores um, the result type. So saved game actually. It's a little bit too weak like this. Um, it needs to have whatever's inside of this as its parameter. So that's a little weird to do. Um, Cause it's a little kind of meaningless, but that's okay. We'll deal with it. Okay, so saved game. So now all we need to do is convert our model to a game. Um, and this should be pretty straightforward because it's pretty similar. In fact, a lot of the types are exactly the same. So player one name is going to be model dot player one name. Who that would be bad to reverse it. Model dot two name uh, was the correct eight ball called, but we'll just defer to the model there too, and then we'll say model dot game. So really, this is just a subset. This is not crazy at all. And there we go. So that should be enough to get us a lot of the way there. Um, so this route builder, so I think what it's gonna do is it's gonna do API slash game, I believe. This is weird, route builder. I wonder what this actually is, route builder game slash save game that's what i imagine is going to happen here um, let's give that a try this is going to fail i don't have any back end code to handle this um, so let's just say right off the bat i get the eight ball in the upper left it's the only thing i get in so obviously i win oh wait let me let me just say a and b for the player names a b Right off the bat, I get the eight ball in. End turn, end game. Uh, you don't have to call it here, um, so to say yes. Um, and then post, okay, wonderful. Post API, I game API, save game. Gateway timeout. Okay, that's a little weird, but that looks pretty much like what I expected. API, I game, API, save game. Okay, so what that's gonna do then, let's see, save game. Um, oh, and actually, you know what? This is wrong because, oh yeah, this is wrong. This should be, um, save game model to game yeah model to game really should take this as an argument because I've modified it in one place but not the other so model to game this is a little coincident coincidental um, but that's okay it's coincidental with the fact that I'm asking in this particular way so I'm actually gonna return this remove this was correct a called thing from the model so I don't need it anymore so was correct eight called um, really what this needs is it needs the initial model again so I think I can just call init to reinitialize the model let's see if that's true init returns a model and a message the model is this first thing the command is the second thing yeah so I should be able to say 
first. Oh no, I don't want to do that. I actually want to return the model until I know this call was successful. Okay. So that's good. Um, so how do I actually make this work on the server side now? I guess I can look in the server code and I can say, is there, so how do I do this? Um, interesting. Um, so there's stuff going on here. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, that's the silliest thing you can say. There's stuff going on here. Wow, very insightful. All right, um, so there's just something dynamic here that's wiring this to the front end, it seems, which is a little, maybe a little scary. Um, maybe, just maybe. So that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete this storage thingy. I'm gonna make this thing called game API. And this is going to resemble what I'm doing in shared to some degree. So it's gonna have save game. And for now, I think I'm just going to make this take in a game. And I'm just gonna make this return unit. That should be enough to appease things. Of course, it's not actually doing anything. Here's my web app starter. Uh, this should be game API. And it looks like this is gonna take a little bit longer in the watch because it has to recompile the backend, which might be slower, I'm not sure. Um, could be wrong. But I think that's good, let me see. Let me see what we've got here. One other thing that I wanted to mention makes this a little bit of a UX um, problem is that if you refresh, you lose all your state. Um, so A and B, and then immediately player A goes and hits this eight ball in end game. Yes. Um, okay. Message, user message saved game undefined. Okay. We got saved game back. So that's cool. Um, the back end didn't do anything, but that's fine as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the client, index.f sharp, and we're gonna handle end game. We're gonna handle saved game. And if you get a saved game, this is gonna reinitialize the model. And yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. So let's refresh this and give it a shot. So A, B. Oh, you know what maybe I could do? Maybe I could do like um, a print of the game. Is that how you do it? It's been a little while since I've done some F sharp. Uh, oh, that's definitely not how you do it. Um, it needs to be something like this. So we're gonna indent that. And then, uh, yeah, that's definitely not how you do it. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, something like that, maybe. Percent A, I think, was how you just say, like, some object, basically. Um, so let's see. I think, that, I think that recompiled successfully. So we have A, we have B, and then A goes ahead and hits the eight ball in the end turn and the game, yes. Okay, comes back to that state. Player one A, um, numbered ball sunk, eight upper left. Okay, um, one thing I don't like is that we append an empty step on the end. Um, but this looks this looks pretty good. Um, that looks like everything I kind of expect to come back. So that's kind of cool. Um, so if you say end game, but you haven't ended your turn, um, I may want to append these turn events and I may not. So I'm actually just gonna make a quick little conditional. Uh, I'm not going to, this is small enough. I'm gonna say turn events equals, if turn events are empty, 
then we want to do this and we don't want to modify game at all if turn events are not empty we want to append them so this isn't the greatest thing in the world to do but it's okay um, so now if I say a b player one goes and they do one into the upper left and they do two into the upper right and then they do nothing ending their turn player two or b uh, accidentally sinks the eight ball in the wrong thing they end their turn that ends the game was the correct eight ball called no okay so that ends up resetting the game and then we have these as our kind of events so player a sink one in the upper left two in the upper right and then um player b sink this in the upper left and the correct eight ball is not called wonderful okay that's cool so i guess the last thing to do is to make it so that and this might be the hardest thing to do um, just because this is a little rusty for me um the last thing to do is to save off this game um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to shared and i am actually going to add one more thing to this game um just a timestamp. let's say played finished at date time that's how you do that um cool fail to compile okay good so if i go to index.fs now on the client um to game finished at is going to be date time so i think that's how you say now if i'm remembering correctly um date time is not defined maybe you want one of the following oh you have to open system can i just say system dot will that work just reference it fully okay yeah um that's cool so basically what i'm going to do is i'm just going to save a file right next to the server um, it just has a serialized object of the game and I'm using finished at just to make sure that object has some unique name so this is a really silly uh, backend strategy but it'll do just fine for this little contrived example um, so here's my shared here's my server um, so F sharp write file Write a file in F sharp. System.io. I think there's like file.write text or something like that. Um, file.write. Uh, what is it? System.file.write text or something like that. It's been a long time. Write all text. That sounds wonderful. Um, System.io write all text string string creates a new file writes specified string in the file closes it so we have the path and we have the contents um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to ooh can I make this async f sharp async write file it's been a little while here um, read all bytes async await tasks okay so I can probably do write all taint. Okay, yeah, I can use this operator here. Perfect. Um, let me try that. So we want something like let bang equal file dot write all bytes. Um, and what we're going to do is just something kind of silly, or write all text rather. Ooh, I didn't do that right at all. This needs to go in here as part of that computation expression. Okay. Um, the value namespace file is not, so I need to open system.io. The 
This should still be wrong because the path isn't right here. Uh, the value consists of path is not defined. Okay, constructor right does not take one. Okay, wonderful. That's all good. Um, so what I want to do is I want to name it after the date time. So I want to just say like F or not F sharp dot net C sharp date time get ticks something like time since epoch. Um, I think I can do like a dot to string and then give it a format or something like that. Here, let me, I forget if it's O or something like that. Um, epoch and date time. Let's try this. Ooh, it's so bright, oh my goodness. Um, ugh. Date time format. Let me just look it up. C sharp date time format. This is one of those things I always have to look up. Uh, to string. To string. I think it's like O or something like that. Or Z maybe. Z hour offset from UTC with no leading zeros. Well, hours is probably not. Um, hours and minutes offset. That's probably not exactly what I want. It's not really. Uh... Oh yeah, that's just part of the part of what I want. Um, I'm missing it. I must be. Hmm. Ah, uh, it's okay. I mean, I could just use a GUID for now, just to get this written. Um, C sharp date time time since epoch. All right, I'll just take whatever gross code I find. Um, date time, parse the date, get now, subtract from the start date. Total number of elapsed day. Ugh, I don't want this. Two Unix time seconds. That sounds nice. Returns the number of seconds that have elapsed since. That's wonderful. That'll do it. Um, it's not perfect. It's absolutely not perfect, but it'll do it. Um, so what I want is something like game dot finished at dot two. Oh, that's a date time offset. Oh, that's not what I want. Um, date time to date time offset. <laughs> oh my. This is always this always feels like a little bit more work than it's um, worth. So maybe, oh man. <laughs> Format date time file to string can be used in a file name or extension. Wonderful. So yeah, this is complaining. This is why I was trying to avoid these colons break it. Um, oh, that, there we go. To file time, that's exactly what I want. Just do this to put myself out of my misery. Um, percent D dot F sharp. It's a little weird to do, um, but it'll be okay. To file time. And then the content is just gonna be S print F, percent A. I really should make it JSON. I'll make it more machine parsable. But for now, I just wanna write it somewhere and I don't really care where. Um, so S print F A, game. Just write the whole game out as a file. That's an F sharp file. Uh, like I said, preferably we use JSON, but this will do fine. Successive arguments should be separated by spaces or tupled. Um, okay, so it's whining because there's this kind of weird thing going on here where this needs parens around it, basically. I remember seeing this before. It's because technically this is a function with a space here, but it thinks I'm trying to apply a function to an argument to an argument to an argument. Um, no overloads match for await task. Um, hmm. Oh, write all text async. That's right. Mm. 
And this is probably overkill. I probably can just return bang this thing. I think this is the right way to do it, just like that. And actually, if you're doing that, I think that that is the same as doing this. So we'll refactor it like that. Yep, I think that's good. Let me save it one more time to see if it, see if it's cool with what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, so let's give this a test go. That was way too hard to figure out how to make a file name, but it's okay. A, B, uh, sync the cue ball like a champ, uh, end turn, player B sinks the eight ball, ends the turn, ends the game. No, we didn't have the correct sync there, and we have an error, wonderful. So what's the error? Or do we have an error? Maybe the back end just isn't ready yet. Connection established, connection refused, socket protocol error. Hmm. Maybe this thing just wasn't ready yet. Let's try that again. So sync the eight from the start and turn end game. Yes. Huh, 500. So this is interesting. I'm getting a 500 with the framework. Isn't reporting anything out. So I wonder if I'm, oh, here we go. No reference. Object not set to an instance of an object. Oh no. A null pointer exception. That's scary. Um, where? Why? Uh, file changed here. Ooh. This isn't good. I'm not really sure what to do with this one. Oh, here we go. So did I have a compile error that I just missed? Um, that's very possible. Let's give that a try. I'm just gonna make this all one line just to give it some change to look at. Yeah, it looks like I had, oh, you know, I'm getting confused. All right, I'm gonna make like a bunch of spaces here so I can actually tell what's going on. <laughs> Interesting. No, nothing. Oh wait, there we go. Yeah, so this is, we have this huge output here. Okay, it's still compiling as far as I can tell. Um, so let's try it again. A, B, eight, whatever, end turn, end game. Uh, uh, no. Weird, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's wrong here, to be honest. Um, this is not at all clear to me. Um, hmm. Write all text async. A file name that looks like that. S print F game. What could be wrong with that? Um, Huh. Well, anyways, I don't want to sit here uh, fiddling with this error. I'll figure it out offline. Um, hopefully, y'all had as much fun as I did with this. I actually really, really enjoyed working with this framework. It was pretty simple to work with up until now. Um, up until now, it's been seamless. It's been great. Um, and I'm sure I'm just doing something silly here. This is probably something that I'm not allowed to do for some reason or another. But uh, anyways, if, you're, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, I may very well use this framework again. I really enjoyed it, like I said, and it was just kind of easy to work with. It was, it was pleasant. Being someone who's done Elm before and someone who's done F-sharp, this was, this was kind of nice. 